On today's episode, it's Analog Effects Pro Creative Blur. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I want to work with uh, creative blurring techniques to add artistic expression to our images. On my last tutorial, I was showing you how we can use color, and I use Color Effects Pro to add artistic expression. But today, it's all about the blur. Today I'm using Analog Effects Pro to blur my image, but you could use Photoshop to do it. You could use Topaz Studio 2 to do it. Man, there's a lot of programs on the market today where you can do blurring techniques, but I find one of the easiest ways of blurring your images is using Analog Effects Pro, and that's what I wanted to show you today. Now, just to give you a little background, you'll notice here, I have a bunch of different layers here, and we're only going to be using the uh, Nick collection today, but I just want to show you, uh, this is the original image right here on the background layer. Now, I did some basic uh, adjustments in Lightroom, some just minor adjustments, and then I uh, went ahead and uh, duplicated the background layer and ran it into Topaz Sharpen AI. It was a little bit soft. And I was mainly concerned about this part of the flower right in here in some of the petals here. I wasn't really concerned with anything else. So I sent it into Sharpen AI for noise reduction as well as sharpening. I used the stabilize mode in um, Sharpen AI. Now I didn't have to use Denoise AI because it had an ISO 500. So Sharpen AI was more than adequate to get rid of the noise. Let me go ahead and zoom into this flower here and just show you the before and after before and after Sharpen AI, here's the before and here's the after. So as you can see, it does a really beautiful job of sharpening my image up. Now on the next layer, you'll notice it's a uh, clean up spot healing layer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And as you can see what happened there, let me shut it off. See this little piece of uh, stem or whatever here. I didn't like that, this piece of flower over here. I wanted to get rid of that stuff. So this is what I call uh, clean up, like cleaning up the background to get it ready for the next stage. Okay, so again, there's the before and here's the after. Now you'll notice this is a blank pixel layer right here. And to, to create that layer, I just came down here and clicked on this icon right here and it creates a blank pixel layer. And I highly recommend whenever you're using the spot healing brush or a cloning tool to always use a blank healing layer or not a blank healing layer, but a blank layer. And uh, make sure if you're using the healing tool, make sure you have sample all layers checked. See right there, make sure that's checked right there or else this technique will not work. And I like using this blank layer because I don't want to paint on my actual pixel layer. I'd rather use a, uh, blank pixel layer to, to do that. Now, after you do that, this is a very important step. You have to bring this image together and stamp it all together. And that shift option command or alt E and that pulls everything together. And you'll see here, I'm going to turn it on. Nothing changes here, but now the whole thing is pulled together here. Cause if you don't do this and, uh, send this, uh, clean up layer into like a plugin, like analog effects, pro, all you're going to get there is this right here. This is what's going to go into the plugin, which you don't want, right? That's not going to look nice when it comes back. So you want to make sure that you stamp that layer together. That's a very important step, so don't miss it. Okay, I've done all my prep work. Now I want to send this image into uh, Analog Effects Pro. But before I do, I'm just going to turn on the Nick Collection layer right here. And by the way, the Nick Collection names itself for you, which is nice. So we're going to try to achieve an effect something like this. Now I'm going to show you three different blur tools inside of Analog Effects Pro. You're going to learn a lot, so stay tuned. But for now, let me go to this layer and let's go ahead and delete it. Now we're ready to launch Analog Effects Pro. Now, if you have the latest version of Analog Effects Pro that is part of the Nick Collection by DxO, there's actually two different ways you can launch Analog Effects. And one way is just to come up to Filter and come down to the Nick Collection and click on Analog Effects Pro. That'll launch the plugin. You don't have to make a new layer. It'll do that for you. The other way is to use the uh, selective tool, the Nick selective tool. And if you don't see that on your screen, all you need to do is come over to File and come down to Automate, and you're going to find that tool, Nick selective tool here. Click on that, and you'll see that tool comes up, and you can launch any of the Nick Collection software right from this tool here but I'm just gonna go ahead and launch it from the filter. So let me go ahead down here and click on Analog Effects Pro. Here we are in Analog Effects Pro. 
let's come over to the left hand side of the screen here see where it says classic camera and you're seeing these presets here i'm going to show you how i'm going to set this up to work with blurs today so we're going to come here and click on where it says classic camera this little arrow right here what we want to do is come down to the very bottom see where it says build a camera we're going to click camera kit now you could use any one of these different tool combinations and they'll set you up for instance like black and white you're going to get a bunch of different tools for black and white and you're going to see presets but i want to build my own camera kit today so i'm going to click on camera kit and when i do it's going to show these tools over here will be displayed over here they'll be uh highlighted the ones that's a part of the last uh effect we were using okay so i don't want dirt and scratches i'm going to take that off I don't want lens vignette. I'm going to remove that by clicking the negative sign. I'm going to take the film type and not use that tool by clicking the negative sign here. And uh, you need to have at least one tool up. So I'm going to start out with the uh, bokeh tool. So I'm going to click the plus here. Make sure I add the bokeh tool. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the basic adjustment tool. I don't really need it today. So I'm just going to get rid of it. We're going to work with three tools today. That's going to be the bokeh tool, the zoom and rotate blur, and the motion blur. So I'm going to show you how they all work. So let's start out with this uh, bokeh tool. Now, if you click this little checkbox right here, uncheck it, there's my original image, and here it is with some blur on it. Now, that's the default setting, by the way. Let's take a quick look at the adjustments in here. Now, under bokeh style, we have a straightforward bokeh blur, and then we have a tilt shift bokeh blur and there's my tilt shift and if i hover over you can see this interface for the tilt shift now if i come back and go to the regular uh ellipse type blur they're calling an ellipse you see that um tool right there okay so we have two different types and i've done some videos in the past using like tilt shift techniques which gives you that miniaturized look uh it really works great on like uh scenic images like landscapes and things like that but i'm going to use the regular ellipse style today and then you have a blur strength adjustment this just increases the amount of blur or decreases the amount of the bokeh blur and then the boost highlights i don't use this that often it defaults at 100 percent. but you can uh if you have a lot of really uh, like specular highlight spots on your image here you can uh make those pop out more make them lighter and then you can change the aperture like the aperture of your lens you can change the way that aperture would look and it simulates a lens aperture if you actually had a an actual lens that blurred the background you would see like uh the shape of the aperture showing through in your image and you can go through here and and change the shape of that aperture we're not going to get into that today it's not going to really be effective on this image so just forget that i'll do another tutorial showing you how that all works nine times out of ten when i'm using the bokeh style i'm using the blur strength only and using this interface tool to make my adjustment now the interface tool is very simple you can take this and adjust the shape of the area that you do not want to blur in other words the area you want to protect now i want this portion of my flower to be in focus but i want to blur out the background because it's really beautiful when you blur out backgrounds and things like that because if i uncheck this right now here's the before and here's the after but see how that blur just makes this look really dreamy and I, and I really love this technique and i use it a lot on my flower images believe me i really love this okay so there's your blur strength so you can adjust the strength and the only other thing you need to do is adjust the shape. Now, think of this area from here to here is how it graduates out, how it blends itself. So if you pull this in like this, you'll have less of a blend. You see that? And then this inner circle will adjust the width of that, okay? Or, you know, how wide it's going to be. And, you know, you can make it more like an oval shape. You have a lot of control here. You can bring it way in. So... Just adjust it accordingly to your taste, however you want it. So I would, in this particular case, I would maybe want all my petals to be in focus like this. And then I want it to radiate out into blur. And then again, you can adjust this transitional zone right here. And I'm going to make that around that. I think that looks good. And now let's take the blur strength and see if we want to blur it even more. Notice when I'm adjusting this slider, you see the interface tool over the flower. But when I go away from the adjust, adjust slider, like move down into this area, then that interface goes away. But and if I hover over my image, the interface comes back up as well. So what do you think? That's probably a little too strong. So I would probably back it off. Maybe something like that. And then click your uh, check here. Here's your before. 
and here's your after. So that's one type of a bokeh blur. Now I like to use this to simulate like lens baby effects, really effective for that. Now let's go ahead and shut this one off and I'll show you a different type of blur. The next blur we're going to use is the zoom and rotate blur. And then after that, we'll use the motion blur. And I like it how these blurs are all grouped together here. Now, I want to show you something very important and remember this. Whenever you want to add another tool, but you want to keep the original tool in the stack of tools over here, if you click the next tool right on the name of the tool, watch what happens. I'll click it. The zoom and rotate blur tool comes up, but I lost my bokeh tool. That's a problem, right? If I wanted to use that tool along with the zoom and rotate blur tool. So... Here's what you need to do. You need to go back a step. And on a Mac, that's Command-Z. And I believe on a PC, it's Control-Z. So I'm going to go back a step. And now I have my Bokeh back up right here. Instead of clicking on the name of the tool, click on the plus sign. When you click on the plus sign, that'll add it to the stack of tools. That's very important. Don't forget that one. I make that mistake all the time. But remember, you can just go back a step. Now let's take a look at the slider adjustments here. Now we have Protect Center. Now when I start to drag this to the right, you see the interface comes up on my image and you can see I'm making the center larger. If I move to the left, I'll make it smaller. The zoom strength, if I move it to the right, you see this area right in here starts to get wider. The zoom strength area makes that zoom stronger or less, less of a zoom. So that's an adjustment there. Or we have this rotate strength. Now, if I move this to the right, see it twisting and see that nice swirling. And that's what I really love about this, uh, this particular tool, that swirling action. Now, I can swirl it to the right or we can go the opposite way, opposite way and swirl it to the left. And you can also uh, move this interface around like this. We, we're just protecting the center here. And we can drag this here and make the center larger or smaller. And we can move this area of strength, zoom strength, with the interface here by grabbing it. Or we can grab these little blue handles and affect the rotate strength here. But for myself, I would much prefer working with the uh, sliders. I think it's just easier to use. Now, you'll notice when I'm moving the slider, you do see the interface on the screen. When I go off the slider you'll see the interface goes away, which is important because you want to you want to see the image without that interface on there. Now, if I hover over the image, the interface comes back on. So that's cool. So let's play with this. Okay, so the protect center. So in this particular image, if I wanted to have my pedals kind of doing a little bit of a dance, because remember, this is all about creativity, right? So I'm going to take it maybe into the pedals a little bit. And now let's play with our, uh, you know, we can play with our zoom strength, like how much of that uh, zoom strength that we want there and you can see the effect as I move it and I'm thinking right around there and let's play with the rotate strength now depending which way I want the rotate to go see how my the tips of my uh, pedals are starting to move a little bit now let's take the protect center in a little bit and now we can see they're starting to do that little dance you know and just play around there's a spot that you're gonna like let's call it a sweet spot like that I like that little dancing there now let's look at the before Here's the before and here's the after. But isn't that beautiful? And again, we have the zoom strength. If we didn't want it as strong, we could pull this in and adjust it. But I'm thinking something like that looks really good. It's simple to use, right? Very effective though. And you can mix these, these uh, tools together if you want to. Say, for instance, if you wanted that background to have more blur to it, you could come up and turn that uh, bokeh tool on and see how that softens it even more. And that depends on the blur strength here. So let me shut it off. So here's without it and here's with it. And again, you can adjust it. You might want to give it a little extra blur or none at all and just check it off. So remember, you can mix these tools together. Let's go ahead and uh, uncheck the zoom and rotate blur. And now let's work with our last tool which is motion blur now remember don't click on the name motion blur click on the plus when you click on the plus your other tools remain here very important the motion blur is a very fun and unique tool now it has uh one slider for motion blur strength so if we move it to the right we increase the blur strength move it to the left we decrease the blur strength and it has this thing called add blur point which i'll show you here in a second but then we have the interface here. Now, we don't have sliders that adjust the interface, so we can make the uh, protect center larger or smaller by moving it here. We can adjust the shape by grabbing these uh, blue squares here so we can make it more of a circular shape. 
an oval shape, whatever way we want. Just grab these squares right here, okay? And I'm going to go in the shape of my flower, something like, like right around there. And then we can, uh, this transitional point here, we can adjust it. We can move it closer or we can pull it out. So if I wanted to, you know, grab the edges of these, which I think looks cool, right? I would adjust this. So if I move this out, like, see, they go away, but that doesn't look good to me. So I would want to move this transition in like this. So we have all this to adjust it and see what we like here. And again, we can move this around, you know, anywhere we want. And then we have this line with the arrow point in the end, and we can move it around and change the uh, direction of the actual motion of the blur. If you grab this circle, blue circle here, you can drag this out like this. And you can see the effect that happens there. It like elongates the blur. You can move it around and change the motion where it's the direction it's going. You can move this in and decrease the amount. So you have all that control like that. And maybe something like that looks pretty cool. And then this other um, add blur point right here. If you click this, you can add another blur point like this. And change the direction. See how this is coming this way? And now it's swirling up that way. Now, again, I can adjust this. How far it's actually moving. I can increase it. Decrease it. And then you could keep adding these points. Like, I can go and click here. Add another point. Put one here. And adjust this shape here. Maybe pull this one up. So, as you can see, I can keep adding these points here. And make my swirls go in different directions. Can you see the fun here? And this is a lot of fun. So let me like maybe pull this one the opposite direction. So now I have swirls going everywhere. You know, and that looks kind of abstract and kind of fun and I kind of like it. And then you can come here and click on the interface and maybe I can pull this in some more and see uh, how that's affecting everything. Maybe pull it in even a little bit more. Say like something like that. And that looks really fun. Let me just move off the inner, off the image here so that interface goes away. But isn't that cool? And then we don't forget we have this compare button. We could come up here, left click it with our mouse, see the before and the after. So there's an image, kind of an okay image, but now it's really fun and creative, right? Artistic expression through blurring. And don't forget, if I wanted to, I could say, you know what? I like the way this looks, but I want to add a little bit more blur to soften this uh, background a little bit more. So I could come up here to my bokeh, check it on, and you see how that softens it? I can open this up and say, that might be a little too much. So I might want to just pull this back just a little bit more. And I might say, that looks good. Uncheck this. Here's the before and here's the after. Yeah, that looks really cool. And then I could come down to my zoom and rotate blur check this one on and combine this with it and that looks cool and i may say well you know what uh i want to pull the zoom strength back and take the rotate strength back a little bit you know and blend a little bit of that in now here's the before and here's the after so now i'm using three filters but you know what i think i like the combination of the bokeh and the motion and the fun doesn't have to stop here. Remember, you have all these other tools, film type, uh, photo plates, dust and scratches. You can work with coloring techniques like I did in my last tutorial. So you can keep going and keep having fun. But for now, I'm going to quit because this tutorial has gotten really long. So when you're happy with it, just come down here where it says OK. Click OK. And that'll send us back into Photoshop. Now we're back in Photoshop. So let's see where we started from. We started from here and we ended up here. We use creative blurring techniques using Analog Effects Pro today, part of the Nick collection. There it is, creative blur using Analog Effects Pro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.